we learned a lot from Canada, but then also I think like we did our our uh, own development. Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. Amazing! What a yeah. run you guys have had. What's the secret in the Swiss water? For <laughs> um i don't know it's uh hard work i guess yeah it's like we, we had great great teams in the past they were really working hard and inspiring the next generation and also me i was like always you know behind uh, miriam mott and lucia Ebnöter and all those and i had to work hard to beat that team and once they got a little weaker it was our turn it seems like and hopefully we can do the same for the next generation well, I wondered about that, Sylvana, and great to see you. And congratulations on your start at the Slam. You just keep the good times rolling. Um, but I wondered about that because you had to be patient. And you were patient and you were waiting. And now this has been your moment and you really have made the, the most of it. How did you stay patient and, and how frustrating was it at times, but you saw it through to finally become the champion you are? Well, if you just uh, take the, the world championships, you know, we had that then uh, we were and we haven't been that successful until the last three years, but there have been so many other things in between, you know, um, we won a Grand Slam as the first team in Switzerland ever. So that kept me going. And then we won uh, a lot of, of events on the World Curling Tour. So we had some successes, but never like internationally. But, you know, I never lost the passion for the game. I, I, I still love the game and and you have to, to love the game um, even if things are not going uh, always the way um, you, you wish for. So that it was never a question to quit for me, actually. Mm. And is that Olympic um, kind of gold dream still hot and heavy? It's a little far away right now, but um, it's not gone yet. Yeah, so it's still it's still a dream, but I cannot say that I'm gonna for sure gonna be there. So it, it's 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 a little at my age, you know. You take season for season, but um, looks like I have another uh, great great team together. So who knows? Like I, I would never say no to that. Tell us about that new team because you, you, yeah. you, you, you were probably watching all of these crazy uh, changes taking in place Canada. here in Canada, um, but you had a big change. What has that been like and what do we need to know about this new team? Because it seems you haven't missed a beat. Well, when uh, Esther and Melanie decided to quit, you know, it was, um, you know, I had to ask myself too if, if, if I still have the energy to build a new team, to um, accept that new challenge. And so I had a good talk with Alina and Alina said, like, without you, I'm not going to do it. So that was encouraging me too, to um, that she still want to see the future with uh, together with me. So and um, yeah, lucky us, we found uh, two very good, uh, promising uh, player who are also um, I love the game just as much as, as we do and have the same goals and the same commitment and uh, yeah we are off to a to a great start so I'm looking forward for everything that's coming nice. wow. well three world championships is amazing I mean a fourth would be like next <laughs> level listen this is our state of the union uh, show where we're looking at the changes that are uh, that are going to happen especially this year at the world curling and you played last year at the world championships with the no tick rule. So now that that is another season of it and likely to continue on, what do you think of that? Is that good for the game? It, well, I don't think it's bad. Um, personally, I don't love it that much. Uh, as a spec spectator, a little more than, than as a player. I think like I would probably love it more if it's just the last end and the extra end, because I think it's taking away some uh, creativity, you know, like in the middle of the game, you um, can also create some off offense uh, to the side if you play the tick. And, you know, I personally, I don't like to see going everything through the middle, like in mixed doubles, you know, it's, it's it can also get a little boring, I think. So I would probably 
like it better if it's just for the last end than for the extra end. Mm. For yeah. no tick or, or that for you no want. tick. Yeah. Right. Mm. Mm. What about the move to eight ends? Because that was debated with this working group. Uh, and I know you're, you're, you play eight end games at many events, but to have it at a world's or even the Swiss championship, is that something that's needed to grow the sport more to speed it up or, or the idea of using thinking time and things like that? Hmm. Well, there, I don't really have a strong opinion on eight or 10 ends. I think 10 ends is an advantage for the better team, but, um, what I don't like is like on a world championship, you know, like you just don't have enough time between games. It's mm. it's like you, you're playing for, for, for a medal or like even for the title and you only have like one and a half hour. You cannot eat properly. You have to uh, sit down on a cold in a, in, a, in a hallway, you know, where it's dark and, and, and spend like the break like this. I just think like that's not how a world championship should be played. And so like you have that basically like three, four times during a world championships where you have like absolutely no time to to eat. And so we have to change that. I think we have to we have to find a solution for that. So eight dance would help. You would have more more time or just uh, uh, like uh, get, like have less teams or whatever. But I don't think we can continue like this. Rest and recovery, so important, Silvana. One of the things we love about this show is we do get the international curlers, people who have been very successful, and we're always fascinated to get the perspective of, of the international curlers who have had success on what they think of the state of the game in Canada. What has Canada as a curling nation meant to you, and where do you think Canada is in the success of the game right now? Because there are a lot of people in this country wondering, where is curling in Canada headed? Big question, but Huge over to pressure. you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's probably how we got better in, in curling, right? When we started to travel to, to Canada, we were able to play in, in big bond spiels and then the Grand Slams were very important in my career to, to, to get better. And that's all happening in Canada. So we, uh, we learned a lot from Canada, but then also I think like we did our, our, uh, own development we we tried to 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 bring the, the game further we 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 try to to think like uh, how how we can get better and 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 practice like crazy you know i think like people in canada they always think like we get founded by the association or by the state or any nothing like that it's true like we have to look for our own sponsors I quit, I quit my job, even though like I had no money just to play curling. And I, I moved back with a friend, like wow. I don't have my own apartment. And so there is a lot of sacrifice that, that we are doing. And I'm not so like all the curlers in Canada are doing that, you know? So mm. it's maybe something that other colors do more than than the canadian colors right now i'm not sure but it's just like uh, i think other nations are just working as hard as as the color in canada right now and that's uh, my my yeah. caught up i mean it was ine inevitable that all the countries would catch up Right. But darn it, you've passed us big time, Sylvana, <laughs> <laughs> as you try to win number four. You wow. Know, you've had enough. You know. <laughs> Listen, just a shout out to Eve Muirhead. What did uh, her win at the Olympics and the Europeans, um, how great uh, a legacy does she leave the sport? Yeah, again, like she's also one one of those girls who was working like crazy. You know, she, she really uh, was... Uh, you know, like her physics was crazy. Like as a, uh, probably she was uh, in shape, the, the, uh, like the best of, of all the women's scholars. And it also, she, she, she was a role model for, for, for many others. You know, we, 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 all, we all of a sudden realized that maybe going to the gym is, is a good thing. And, and so, um, what she achieved at her age, I mean, she, she became world champion, like, I don't know how old she was, but uh, um, not, not much older than 25, I think so. Right. And then, and then 
she, she had so many different teams and was was always successful as as, as escape making at the best out of her players uh, i think and it's it's too bad that her career ends uh, at that young age you know and uh, i actually hope maybe she's gonna give a comeback in a few years when she when she has the, the fire back but yeah i was hoping uh, she would be on tour for a little bit longer yeah i must admit i was surprised by the uh, uh retirement news too but anyhow yeah. well good luck this weekend listen who is this Raphael kaiser that's also perfect from switzerland at the this is a name we haven't heard of yeah yeah, she's going to make our life hard, I think, the, last, <laughs> the next four years. Yeah. Oh, nice. Well, it's always good to have somebody chasing your butt a little bit, right? I mean, yeah. you know, you need that. You need yeah. that push in your own country. But It looks like you still have the fire, Sylvana, and it mm -hmm. looks like you're having a lot of fun. And I think at the end of the day, that's probably what will keep everybody going if you're enjoying your time on the ice. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, listen, good to good of you to join us tonight, and good luck in the playoffs. Yes. Thanks for having me.